For the last couple of months, I've been using this HP Dragonfly Elite and it is fantastic. Exceptional laptop, I absolutely love it. Only problem is, this right here is $3,700. <laughs> I want to recommend it to all of you guys, but I cannot because of that price tag. Fortunately though, HP has made the Dragonfly Pro. It's apparently the same basic thing, but at a price you can afford, maybe. Before we look at the Pro, I wanna just go over the stuff that I love about the Elite. So first of all, the pillow corners right here. Oh my God, they feel good. You can just have this in your hand, be ripping around with it. It is fantastic. Everyone at CES, I went to their booth and was like, guys, screw off with all the sharp edges. I want nice rounded ones. Also, IO is great coming from some Dells. It's really nice to have USB type A, HDMI, use those all the time. And finally, it's very, very light. So I can be ripping around with this in my backpack. It has like 14 hours of battery life. Fantastic. If they can hit most of those, I will be very happy with the Pro. All right, what do we have for power? 96. So right here we have a 96 watt charger, which for something of this size is really good. That should be able to charge up the battery super fast. We also have a very nice type C cord along with it. Ah, so that's actually an upgrade. On the Elite, you get a 65 watt charger and on the Pro, it is 96. That is going to be really great because even the 65 watt I found is very good at fast charging. So good job, HP. Hmm. Now, by using magnesium, the Pro is able to hit 2.8 pounds. So that is pretty darn good. What do we have for the Pro? 3.4. That is quite a bit heavier, especially for like a 14 inch ultralight. That's uh, not quite ultralight anymore. Maybe it has the power to make up for it though. It does have an AMD processor. HP. For the IO, we get Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 4, and around the other side, USB type C. I want to just walk into whatever engineer or corporate person at HP did this and take in the top of their This is unforgivable, guys. For the last couple of years, the one thing that I have loved about HP is they have been making devices that feel like they were actually used by the people that make them. This right here, it doesn't have like, it's not the thinnest, it's not the lightest, and they could have improved both of those things if they had just a little bit less IO, but oh my God, I absolutely love having like USB type A and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but instead they've gone full Dell on us. Doesn't even have a headphone jack. Guys, no, please just, just stop, do not do that ever again. What do you think, immediate disqualification? DNF, stop the video. <laughs> Jake says to get AirPods, which is stupid because this right here is billed as a pro laptop for creators and Gen Z and all of that crap. And do you know what creators really like to do? Have their audio be in sync with their video if they are editing audio and video at the same time. Do you know what doesn't do that? Bluetooth, because it has to do stupid streaming program. It does not have anywhere near the latency that just simple wire does, or the quality, or the general convenience. Are you telling me AirPods Pro aren't pros? The H, the AirPods Pro are as pro as this <laughs> 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 All right, well, hopefully they didn't screw up the build quality. Let's see here. One finger, not approved to open it. What is a good sign though, is that this chassis is extremely rigid. So they have gone from magnesium alloy to aluminum, but honestly that is fine in my opinion because it just drops the price by so much. And it feels like that they have at least done a very good job of making this very, very sturdy. It might even be stiffer than the Elite. It is virtually identical. It looks like the track pads have stayed almost identical, although the Pro is slightly larger. So the Elite, we get a 13 and a half inch screen, although on the Pro, it is a full 14 inches, which is why it is ever so slightly wider. Another thing I really like about the Pro is the color. It is just black, but at the same time, 
I think it looks pretty darn good. One thing that can be a problem with a black device though are fingerprints. So you can see on the silver right here, I can do this all day. You cannot tell just how dirty and sweaty I am. Whereas with the Pro, let's see. This is rejecting fingerprints fantastically. It's not quite the same as that ASUS one with their fancy plasma, whatever the coding, but this is pretty darn good. If you look really, really close, I don't know if we're going to be able to get this, but in the black, it isn't just matte black, but there's like tiny gold specks in it. That just adds kind of a little bit of dimensionality that's quite nice. Apparently it's called sparkling black. One final test before we turn it on, panel rigidity, which is, oh, this one's really good. This is a well-built chassis. I do have to say HP, excellent job there. And speaking of well-built, our sponsor, Secret Lab. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's video. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. Their Titan Evo 2022 chair keeps you feeling comfortable for longer with four-way lumbar support, an ultra comfortable line of different seat materials and more. All chairs come with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy. Head to the link in the description to check out Secret Labs today. First thing that I'm noticing is that I'm getting a lot of glare of the lights behind me. Now, one of my absolute favorite things about the Dragonfly Elite is that it has an option of a matte display. I like just look at the difference here when I have it aimed at the light. So this right here has the glossy display. You can just see my head in the light, whereas on the matte, nothing at all. If you have like a really nice dark area where you mostly do your stuff, then sure, glossy looks way better. Another thing that I really liked about the Elite that a lot of other HP laptops have not had is that the keyboard is like perfectly centered on your trackpad. This is because a lot of them have macro keys on the side, moves the whole thing over a little bit, and then it's just kind of awkward because you're a little bit off to the side. On the Pro, they've brought that back and they've brought it back in the worst way imaginable. So not only is the whole keyboard shifted to the left by a key because you have macro keys over here, but they are freaking useless. <laughs> so here we hit the first one and it opens up the My HP Center, which is totally fine. There's actually a lot of quite useful stuff in here. The problem is that, let's hit the second one. It takes us to a different tab of the exact same software. Now let's uh, hit the one below it. It takes me to another tab in the exact same software. Let's hit the final one. That one actually does whatever you want. It's programmable, so good job there. But uh, the other ones, I do not need a dedicated support key. What is much more crucial that they get right though is the keyboard. On the Elite, this right here in my mind is an A++ keyboard. And given that I am a writer who writes things for a living, that is the most important part about this device. I have never on any other laptop felt a keyboard that I like as much as this one because there's just heaps of travel, heaps of feedback. It just feels so good, love it. Hmm, it's not as good. I'm gonna need to type on it for a second here to figure out if it's just worse than the best or actually not good. Okay, this is actually a fantastic keyboard. It just does not have the qualities that I was hoping for with the Dragonfly name. So this right here has these super duper light super snappy keys that have very little travel, but they are extremely well supported. So look, I'm like, I'm pushing on the side of this key. I can barely get it to move before it fully actuates. And I do have to say it is a very, very good keyboard. That said though, one thing that is a massive improvement on the Pro is they have media keys. So one of my big complaints about the Elite is that it does not have pause, play, or next track, track back and it instead has like airplane mode. I do not use airplane mode ever, even when I'm on planes. So <laughs> having just pause play, very, very nice to see. I was slightly concerned when I thought they had a force touchpad on this device, just because I haven't seen one from HP before and sometimes they screw up the trackpads, but this is very, very good. So you're able to change your touchpad feedback. So if you maybe want a little bit more force, you can feel it way more or you can knock it down a bit if you just want a tiny bit. You can probably even hear it if I lift it up to the mic. It is quite satisfying and also the tracking seems great. 
So good job, HP. I will be recommending your force touch pads from now on. One area that's a little bit of a side grade is the display. The thing that I really liked about the Dragonfly Elite is that it has a three by two display, which just gives you even more vertical space. And when you live in Word documents, that is great. On the Dragonfly Pro, we've been knocked down to 16 by nine, but at the same time, it's now 14 inches instead of 13 and a half. I think it evens out at the end of the day. Resolution is 1920 by 1200 P, which is like, you might want a little bit more resolution, but at the same time, it'll be hitting your battery life. And this is very much a machine about the battery life. Our labs tested it and the Pro gets a brightness of 413 nits, whereas the Elite only gets 370, despite both of them being advertised as 400. Both is pretty darn good though. Shockingly, the contrast is identical between the two, even though looking at them, it seems like the glossy display has just way, way more contrast. What is incredibly interesting though, is that the Pro is way more color accurate. Our lab measured an average Delta E of 2.7 on the Pro, which is not quite at the two that you would expect for professional devices, but it is very close and it's much better than the 4.4 that we measured on the Elite. The problem with the Elite is that it seems to have a bit of a magenta shift to it, whereas the Pro just hits it right on. That said, they're both more than good enough if you want to be like reviewing videos or editing photos, stuff like that, you can trust them. For the specs on the Pro, you get a Ryzen 7 7736U, which is eight cores, 16 threads, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM that is rated at 6,400 mega transfers per second. That is fast. We also have a 512 gigabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 6E. Yes, oh, but it's a Qualcomm adapter. So maybe not as good as an Intel one. And for the GPU, of course, it's just AMD integrated. Our labs went ahead and tested this thing against the Elite, which does have 12th Gen V Pro, but at the same time, that is still pretty recent. And uh, the Pro slaughters it, like absolute murder. <laughs> the AMD processor that we have in the Pro is exceptional. So we were able to record very similar Cinebench scores, wave to flack encoding, but if you're using AV1 encoding, the AMD processor just absolutely murders the Intel one. Also in games, well, uh, you're not gonna be having an amazing time. Like in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we got 25 FPS on this one. With the Intel, we got five. The most impressive thing that we tested though was the battery life. So we tested it with full brightness doing a YouTube video and the Elite was able to get 10 hours which is good. And by dropping down the brightness a bit, I have been able to get like 12, 13 out of this, no problem, even 14 if I really try. The Pro with the battery at full took 14 hours and 15 minutes to die. <laughs> that is MacBook M1 levels of battery. And also it is very, very close to the M1 in terms of like encoding and general performance. I have had no issues just not charging this thing for like an entire week, which I have not been able to do on anything aside for a MacBook. And I expect this right here will be even better. I friggin' love it. Thank you, AMD. Now, one thing that has been very surprising about the Elite is just how good the speakers are given how small this thing is. I'm curious if the Pro can live up to that. <laughs> So far, so good. I might hear a bit of distortion though. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. The speakers are pretty good, but it cannot live up to the Elite. It lacks the clarity and the bass that you get in this one, but at the same time, these are pretty darn good speakers for a thin and light laptop. These are good, I'd give it like an A minus maybe, but it's not hitting the A plus of the Elite. Oh, I need to make sure that it's in performance mode. Hotkey! Maybe? HP, if you're going to go the Dell route and not include actual IO on your laptop, at least be nice like them and include the dongles that you need to like use your devices with it. All right, five minutes later, we can plug in our mouse. Oh, this is, this is looking good. This is looking good right here. We are at 1200 P 
and we are currently hitting 53 FPS. That is very, very good for a device of this size. Like, this is obviously not a gaming laptop. It is nowhere close to being a gaming laptop. But at the same time, it has got some darn good performance. And it feels like the latency of the display is really quite good too. We didn't test it, but on the Elite, it is dog slow. The panel on that is just, it feels like a geriatric old man just when you try and make the pixels switch. They're just like, uh, gray to still gray, uh. It's really bad. This is so much better. We've been playing for a little while now too, and it is not very loud. These fans are very reasonable, and especially when you compare it to the HP Elite, it absolutely murders it in gaming performance. Actually just, it murders it in performance is a pretty good way to summarize it. I am very, very impressed with the AMD U series. They have been killing it with efficiency and power lately. On the HP Dragonfly Pro, we get the same five megapixel camera that you do on the Elite, and it is a very good camera. We're recording this at 1440p right now. HP is probably the company that I think does the best job at always exposing for your face. So you can see right here, I am moving all around in this really quite challenging environment, and it is having no trouble making sure that I, you know, look like a person a little bit hot there. Nope, I figured it out. Perfect. On either side of the webcam, we also have Windows Hello Facial Recognition. And if you don't want to use that, we also have a fingerprint reader right up here. Oh, does this have a little... Okay, so they have a hard switch right here for disabling your camera, but it doesn't have the little shutter. You can see on the Elite, but I really appreciate that they have a tiny little shutter there. Oh, there it is. Webcam. No webcam. It's very satisfying. Hello? Aha. Uh -huh. Is that a vapor chamber? Hot oh, dang. Well, there isn't a whole lot on the go in here besides battery. So 63 watt hours is exceptional for something of this size. There are some that are currently getting up to more like 75, but HP are very, very good about their battery optimizations. So in the end of the day, this right here does have the battery battery life. Like we said before, 14 hours and 15 minutes is freaking exceptional and just fantastic job, guys. Also in here, we have this massive vapor chamber, which is probably why we were able to get such good performance in games. But uh, I don't see an upgradable SSD. On a device of this size, I can let it go with soldered RAM because it just, you know, getting those sodiums on there adds a lot of height. And also you can have much faster RAM when it's soldered down, which this is. Soldered SSD sucks. <laughs> it is kind of annoying because one thing that the commenters brought up in one of our recent videos is that these companies will talk about how great they are for the environment. And then they just <laughs> solder everything down there. And if you want to repair it, I don't know, go get it. So the HP Dragonfly Pro. I have not been this disappointed in a laptop in a very long time, simply because they are so close to having an absolutely amazing laptop here. Literally all they had to do was just have USB type A, HDMI, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and I would have told literally everyone to go out and buy this. But instead, I cannot, and it makes me very mad. They, they could have eliminated, completely just castrated Dell here. Their XPS 13 and 13 Plus, stupid laptops. So dumb, and I would have been very happy to be like, hey Dell, that was clearly stupid. Everybody should go buy HP now. But instead I can't, because they have mm, this, this right here. Guys, please. I'm so mad. I want a laptop like this one. Overall, I think it is a really good laptop. Like the performance and the battery life cannot be found outside of MacBooks. And for that, like excellent job HP. If only you had stuck the landing, I would have told everyone to go buy this. It's 1400 bucks. That's pretty expensive, but this one's 37. So I don't know, big improvement there. <laughs> the biggest problem is that HP themselves have many a device that because of the IO is just simply better than this. They have their Spectre lineup, which has, you know, sort of silly edges, but overall very, very good. They have their Envy lineup, which is way, way cheaper. Also has AMD processors available and also has good IO. So yeah, I don't know, go get an HP Envy. Those are just better laptops.
Thank you so much for watching. Hit like, get subscribed, and I don't know, go and tell everybody that you still need USB Type-A because uh, nobody seems to know that. Have a good day.